as architects, leaders, or technology professionals, you get to be judged by the quality of your decisions. So if you're leading a team, building a product, delivering a service, what tools do you get to use? And what decisions do you make about the tools you use? Or more importantly, the tools you don't use and why? That's really at the core of what we do as technology professionals every single day, making those technology uh, decisions. And the quality of those decisions will be reflected in the successes that you get with the products you build or the failures that you get to encounter in the fields. And so whatever information we can gather to help us make the right decisions, I think will be very, very much welcome. And that's going to be what we show here today with a quick uh, demo of a little product or a product out there, not necessarily a little product uh, called the SaaS application called stackshare.io that helps inform decision makers about what stacks and these are technology stacks other organizations are using and it could be a valuable barometer to use to say hey if other people are using this is this something i should use or it could validate your idea on why not to use a particular stack because ultimately whatever piece of information you get to help you make the right decision uh, goes a long way so stack share uh, provides uh, technology stacks for uh, big uh, companies. And you can look at this to say, what are the other people doing, right? They tend to say birds of the same feathers flock together. Or another saying that I really love is success leaves clues. Like success always leaves a breadcrumb and you just have to, or breadcrumb, you have to just follow that. And if other companies are using a particular stack and being successful, well, what stack are they using? And can you copy their success? Or what stack is a company using? And can you not copy that as well? So definitely things to learn. Stackshare.io is the site. It's browser-based. And what they talk about here is uh, tech stack collaboration for developers. And uh, they seem to have a, a pretty good community there. Uh, private tech, uh, private uh, stack share for teams. And just a whole lot of, uh, of, of goodies in there. But again, uh, stack share. Uh, uh, or, or share tech stack decisions with other developers. If you make a decision on what messaging queue to use, what database to use, uh, what uh, uh, programming language to use, or what mo cloud monitoring tool to use, you name it. Why were those decisions made? What lessons have you learned? And can other people benefit from that tribal knowledge in a global perspective? It's really the promise of stack share. Uh, and I personally... Um, when I stumbled on it, I, uh, I tend to visit this, look at particular companies, see what's in their stack. It might open up blind spots for me to say, hey, uh, are they using this particular tool? I have no idea what this is. Maybe I should go learn about this and uh, educate myself on this. Or I might say, hey, uh, this company or so is building this stack and they have a terrible product and this is a reason why you shouldn't care about this stack, right? As somebody who is out there and, and sharing ideas and my, my perspective, from a thought leadership perspective in, in the industry, the more exposure and knowledge I get about different stacks, the more I can adequately uh, uh, inform uh, people. And so really having this uh, platform is, uh, is of great uh, value. Now, I don't know how accurate the, the, the data is, but it could be a starting point for you to then go into your research with uh, other publications that have information on on, on different stacks and different tooling. So I'm talking about like the Ghana Magic Quadrant, the Foresters of the World and, and all of that. Those were the established um, avenues where people would go in trusted to make decisions. But who controls those, those uh, what goes on that list, right? There is, there is corporations and there is a lot of things at stake for companies to make it to those lists. I'm talking about the Ghanas and the Foresters of the World. They are valuable, but you also have to understand the context around it. Whereas when you see things more like this tribal, community-based, grassroots-based uh, endorsing or not endorsing of a tool, this could also be an, another valuable angle to be informed about tools and the decisions that you make. So in here, let's just go really quick. I created a, a quick account in, um, in Stackshare. Uh, you come in, you can log in. And I'm going to go ahead and log in with, uh, with, uh, with my Google account. All right, so we're logged in into Google. And when you come in, the very first thing you see is a feed. Um, and this is all a SaaS-based. So 
around the world, around the globe, people are talking and collaborating on particular uh, uh, tools. Uh, there are feeds, there are decisions, there's what's trending, and just a whole lot of uh, goodies. I think I'm not yet set up, so it's asking for things to set up. But one of the, 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 the first uh, places to, to call out here is you can come in and browse stacks. So think about your favorite successful uh, fang type of company that is having a lot of success from an engineering or technology perspective. What stack do they use? What tools do they use? And could you learn from that? So let's pick, and I'm just kind of browsing here really quick. Um, let's pick uh, Lumosity as, as, uh, as an example. Uh, I believe they make uh, brain training. Uh, they have an app for training the brain and, uh, and the mind and, and, and that stuff. So I, you might be wondering, what stack do they use, right? You come in here, you can click on uh, Lumosity. Maybe you're a salesperson, you're trying to sell into Lumosity, or you're just a, a technologist, you're trying to advise them, or you're trying to start your own company similar to uh, Lumosity, and you want to understand what their stack is. This gives you some insights into it. Again, I don't know how accurate this data is, but uh, it's a starting point, right? So there's Kafka in there. Uh, there's JavaScript, uh, NGX, uh, MySQL, um, some cloud stuff, and DevOps. They use GitHub and business tools. Slack is what they use, right? So you can see here they use Slack. They don't use Teams. So if you are using Teams and you're talking about Teams here, this might be very quick for you to understand that, all right, Teams is not what they use. Slack is where you want to be focusing your effort in as far as it's concerned. So that is from an angle of somebody who is potentially a salesperson or leveraging something like this. But just imagine as technologists, uh, professionals, how could this be valuable? Let's say you come in here and you see something like Kafka. Assume you have no idea what Kafka is. You've never heard about Kafka. And yet there is an organization like this that you're trying to copy the stack because that's why you came here. And they have something listed here called Kafka. Now, this is an avenue to say, all right, I need to go understand this Kafka thing and be familiar with it and, and why they use Kafka. And I believe there is some, if you look here on the right, uh, somebody made the stack decisions. There are uh, followers. And uh, uh, it talks about what Lumosity is. And I don't know if this is a Lumosity employee that wrote this um, that wrote this particular decision, but somebody made a decision about Kafka, and you can go in and read why that decision was made by this engineering manager, and that could help you with making your own decision. So this engineering manager is from Tomstack, and they made that decision. And then you can even now go down the rabbit hole and just click on Kafka as a whole, because we've seen Kafka on a particular stack, now I have an opportunity to dive in and to understand what this Kafka is. Again, assuming you have no idea what is Kafka, right? Kafka is a distributed messaging queue. And who uses Kafka? You can see the companies that use it. And if you're just looking for FOMO or the fear of missing out type of scenario to say, if everybody else is using Kafka, why is my team not using Kafka? You can get that validation to say, okay, other folks are using this from a uh, from uh, uh, from the community, and if you are uh, an engineering manager, this could also validate your point of view. And would you put more weight on this compared to say like uh, the foresters of the world or the gardeners or whatever uh, publications are out there? Give or take, because if this is coming from a community and these are actual people, not potentially people that could be influenced by a lot of money moving hands, but these are actually people that are making those decisions and contributing, that could be a very substantial uh, data point to help inform your decision. And that's why I think this concept of collaborative decision making and sharing of this idea or ideas in a platform could be uh, could be very powerful. There are some companies that um, use technology as a competitive advantage, and they have no incentive to share their stack. I'm sure you might run into companies like that. But we're living in a day and age where people change jobs. People go to one company and they go to the next company, and they're going to copy what they saw from the previous company into the new companies. So just if you use Kafka and you're trying to hide the fact that you use Kafka, unless there's something really unique you're doing, people want to share knowledge. They want to talk about what they do. They want to talk about their success. And not only does it help with the community, but it attracts talent. If I am an engineering manager, I want to talk about what we're doing, what cool tools we're doing, what machine learning we're working on, how what stack we're doing, and how we're doing amazing stuff with something like Kafka. Guess what? Because great talent 
we hear about that and they're going to want to come to my team and work for me instead of the competitor. And so um, when thinking about this presentation, that was one of the things that came to mind is, well, would people want to share the stack or is it going to be private and proprietary? There are cases where it could be private and proprietary. I totally understand that. But for the most part, this is an information age and, and companies that are just being proprietary with what they do, uh, I don't think that uh, get to have the best talent uh, as a whole. So let's look at Uber here. We know Uber is an Uber technology company, pun intended. Uh, you can come in here, see their stack. And Python is what they use. There's Java. Uh, there is Backbone, the JS, and Rips, and RSDB. Now, I don't know what this RSDB is. And I might say, okay, what is this RSDB, right? It doesn't have uh, uh, any information, a GPU-powered real-time analytics storage and query engine by Uber. So probably it's an internal engine built by Uber, potentially. Now you learn, right? I'm learning about what is going on at Uber here. Uh, they use Apache Thrift in there too as well. There's MongoDB, there is NGX and React. And so you get some really good information from a utilities perspective. There is Heap, Crazy Egg, um, Twilo is in there, DevOps and Terraform and Grafana, Sentry. And, and Kraken, and then uh, Business Tools, G Suite, Metamose. Oh, that's interesting. One login, uh, I done this, and you name it. So really good information. Again, how accurate this is, um, is something you can we can have conversations about, but this gives you a good starting point uh, for either technology salespeople, consultants, or just if you're looking to work at Uber and you're trying to update your resume and you understand what the uh, uh, skills they need, that also gives you a good starting uh, point. So lots of uh, uh, ways in which this could be uh, useful. And you see almost 3,000 uh, people uh, following uh, this. Um, uh, following this, And they're even engineers. So let's click on, uh, uh, let's click on a particular engineer. And you have the CTO of, I don't know if this is accurate, Tech brand manager of his CTO at Uber. So potentially the CTO at Uber. Is this really the CTO at Uber? As of making this video. Yeah, at one point. So the data might be might be uh, a little bit uh, dated. It doesn't seem like this particular individual works at Uber as of currently or uh, making this video. But at one point they were the CTO of Uber. Okay and uh, that's valuable information and they're following a bunch of companies so just a great way to to uh, to learn to elevate to expose yourself to technologies what other people are doing and 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 pluck yourself in into this tribal knowledge i'm just a big fan of tribal knowledge and sharing um, things we learn which is the whole goal for this channel sharing uh, things I, I i run across if other folks could get value out of it there's no reason just you know keeping it uh uh, to yourself. So uh, let's start look at a couple more here. Uh, Database Lab and Docker Data Center. Kong is another one for microservices. It's kind of pretty big there. So um, we can look at, you know, people following Kong. Um, what are the pros for it? Easy to maintain. So people are actually putting the pros and you can vote up. On, I'm not going to vote on that because I, I don't know. You want to make sure you're giving honest feedback as well. So I'm not going to vote on that. But you can, if you're trying to make a decision, should you use Kong uh, <clears throat> for your microservices, microservices or, or API uh, building and management, or should you use something else? This gives you some some good uh, data points. And I'm assuming these are from real users, architects, right? These are not just people off the street. These are architects as well that have used this tool and they're making those decisions and they can have insights or comments as well. So just uh, uh, an overall powerful knowledge uh, gathering uh, asset uh, to uh, to use. And what are the features? What are the alternatives uh, to call? Istio is there, uh, APIG from Google, Zoo, Jersey, Linkit. So you can see some of the, the alternatives. And if you're trying to make a decision, great, 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 great starting point. Of course, I know there are lots of other uh, resources out there that would do uh, provide you very similar information. Uh, but this is this is one right now. There's also an API which um, I of course haven't tried it or played with it. But this API could be useful for what building applications. 
that uh, embed this into your own app uh, on cover tech stacks behind 1.5 million companies and counting uh view api results without coding so let's take uber so okay so you can just put the, the api and it gives you the results and i can imagine let's say you wanted to build your own app or or something that similar you can you know, use that data for for it and that's how they make money they monetize that uh, that data which is not a, a bad strategy uh, and then you can come into jobs if you're looking for jobs too as well. I could see this being valuable. Um, I haven't. Uh, uh, I could see this. I uh, I haven't really thought about the use cases for jobs for people looking for jobs. But I'm assuming that if you're a company and uh, people are you're using a particular stack and you have information about the stack here, why not post your job so your job listing so folks that are interested in that stack and or in that thing that uh, product can um, can take a look. So that's why I, I see this being valuable so there's of course uh, a job here for software engineers of course bad data which is something you expect for for products like this let's try this one all right so they use jobs the lever the core i'm not sure what that is but if you're looking for jobs too um this could be an an interesting avenue the interesting piece here is the jobs would list the the stacks or the, the technologies that are being needed and you can even just click on, oh, I thought you could do that. All right, I guess you can't. I was expecting that you can click on this and it would just take you to that stack. So you can kind of have this multi-dimensional linking between jobs and stacks and, and all of that from a learning perspective. I don't know why Git is listed here, uh, but uh, just something very curious. So an interesting um, an interesting uh, site or utility, whatever we call this, uh, to have in the tool belt and to reference uh, stackshare.io and I believe it says private uh, stacks so connect your git repo to see which uh, see all tech stacks you're using and get alerts when your stack change this is an interesting one I uh, I didn't see this in the uh, in the beginning but what I could imagine this happening and I don't want to speak on this and be wrong but so see all your tech stacks and people using them in one dashboard Hmm. All right. So my guess, and I'm gonna have to play with this some more, is and if, if you know about this more about this, let me know in the comment section below. But my intuition about this is that you can connect to GitHub. If your organization has a private GitHub repo, this will scan that repo um using AI or whatever it is to figure out the stacks in there based on the libraries and the dependencies or, or comments or so and then generate a tech stack for you. Um, and as an executive for the organization, if you want to know what stack is my company using, or maybe they should not, there is some business transaction going on and your, your organization is prohibited from using a particular stack for competitive reason, for legal reasons, or for whatever reason, this can surface that and you can make those uh, architecture decisions uh, at a very high level. Uh, based on your own current implementation and code coming from GitHub. I'm guessing that that is what this is about. I might be totally off with that uh, speculation. But if that's the case, then I think that could be very, very powerful for, for leaders and CIOs and CTOs or, or, or VPs that want to make sure that the organization, for whatever reason, is using the right technologies uh, stack and some rogue developer is not off in some corner using a stack or utility without the right approvals. So there you have it. Just a quick uh, exploration of it. I think it's a very nifty um, uh, uh, product. Uh, can you go ahead and create a stack? You can put your own company and then um, um, based on your GitHub, Azure repos. Okay, so that's what we talked about. So if you have your own company, your own uh, uh, startup, let's actually try this. I know you. Uh, we've talked about uh, physically that IO, which is a, a little project I've uh, worked on for searching physical calendars for companies. Um, let's see if we come in here, we throw that in and we scan that. Oh, okay. So the stack already exists. So let's search for physically. Io. There you go. So physical IO is that stack. So let's just click on this physical databases. Um, and you see it uh, uses jQuery. Not it uses more than jQuery. All right. Um, 
there is more that is being used in there. I can I can say that for sure. I'm not sure why there are duplicate companies um, here listing uh, physically dot io, but you you get the idea. If you have your own startup as well, you can you can leverage that. But the use cases here are bound for sales uh, professionals, for tech professionals, for leaders. Uh, anyone who just has to make a decision at some point could could get a lot of value out of this. So there you have it, guys. Uh, check out Stack uh, Share that IO. Uh, could be very useful uh, for you as a technologist or as a leader for your organization. And hope you you got value out of this. As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. If there is a video, a tool, a utility, or whatever it is you want me to talk about, to to bring that up on the screen and to show it with other folks. Let me know and I'll see what I can do. Uh, as always, you have been very awesome watching to the end. I have been through and I will see you in the next presentation.